Welcome back to my bathroom. This is video three of the hair color series. If you missed the first two, I'll put a link in the description box below. Today, we're breaking down everything you need to know about toning the hair. For example, if you bleach the hello out of your hair and realize, oh wow, it's yellow, you would correct that with a toner, not more bleach. If you're joining me from cosmetology school, we are in the Milady 13th edition and we are on page 675 and 679. So toners are typically used on bleached or pre-lightened hair. So basically your blondes. It's usually done in the shampoo bowl if you're doing a real client or if you're at home, you can do this in the shower. You usually do it after you've bleached the hair. Like I said, when you realize, oh wow, I have yellow, cat pee yellow, orange hair, this is how you fix it in the sink. So how you pick your toner is pretty simple. We're gonna roll it all the way back to second grade and go over a little bit of color theory or the color wheel. So here's what it looks like basic color wheel. When you break it down, you start with three colors, your primary colors, blue, red, and yellow. These cannot be made. You need these three colors to make every color in the world. Like if you've ever seen when your TV goes static, it goes on you and it's showing blue, red, and yellow dots, it's configuring how to make those colors with those three colors. When you mix the three colors, blue, red, and yellow together, you will get black, brown, or dark gray. So these are your primary babies. These are what's going to make all of these hair colors that we're going to be talking about. Now your secondary colors are made when you marry two primaries together. They have a baby and you get a secondary color. So when red and yellow combine and have a baby, they get orange. Yellow and blue is green and blue and red create a violet baby. When you put all that together, you get the color wheel. Now, when we're talking about hair colors, we typically describe them as cool or warm. So if you divide the color wheel in half, half of it is going to be on the cool side and half of it is going to live on the warm side. So your blues, think of like ice, that's cool tones. Your reds, oranges, these are warm tones. Think about it like a sunset. Is it a sunset? Sunrise, I guess it's the same. Sunset, sunrise, fire, warm, hot. Blue, ice, cool, cold. Blonde hair is yellow, typically. Yellow or orange, so it's considered a warm tone. So if you do not like that warm golden tone, you need to correct it with the opposite, which is a cool tone. Does that make sense? Tones are really important when your client is unsure of their hair color or perhaps they need some more direction or even yourself. If someone has like ghostly white pale skin, a cool tone, which is made of the blues, ashes, may not be the best choice for them because they're already pale. So if their skin has a cool or blue undertone, you want to add what they're missing, which is the warm tone. So you could do like a nice auburn with some red, to balance their pale, ghostly skin, or tell them to get outside. I don't know about it. When we pick out a toner, we're using what's called complementary colors. These are colors that are opposite on the color wheel. So if you take yellow and violet and collide them together, they will neutralize or balance each other out. So if you have yellow hair, you need violet to cancel that out. Now to clarify, you're not just using straight up violet hair color. That will that will purple people eat your hair. You will have violet purple hair. You're looking for a color in your level, which we went over last week, with a violet tone. We determined last week that my hair is a level nine, level 10. We're gonna give me some grace and give it a level 10, which is the brightest blonde. The best way to do this is on paper, folks. We know this, write it down. The lightness or darkness, it's level 10. Now we need to decide what is the tone that it is showing me today. Is it orange? Is it yellow? Is it red? What is the tone? The most common tone is yellow. Why? Again, level 10, how light or dark is it? It's the brightest blonde. What's my tone? Why for yellow? So what we're going to do to formulate our toner, we're going to bring this thing down. Number 10, bring it down. Which means I'm gonna pick out a hair color that is still a level 10. I don't wanna change how light or dark this is. I just wanna change the tone. Now you can absolutely pick out a darker, level if you want to, but I would stick like maybe one or two. So I could do like a nine or possibly an eight, but I wouldn't really do anything else when I'm talking about toners on blonde hair. So then I take a look at the color wheel. What is opposite of yellow is violet. So I'm gonna do the opposite and I'm looking for a 10V hair color at the supply store. And it looks like this, 10V, V meaning violet. So what this is saying is it's the brightest blonde with a violet tone. You always want to open the box 
and read all the words. You're looking for the ratio. So how much color to developer does this brand use? Because they're all different. So this one is a one to one and a half. Take the color, pop the lid. In a salon setting, we would be using the scale, weighing this. If you're at home, grab something from the kitchen. I just can't get to the kitchen, y'all, because once I get in this bathroom, all this equipment, I can't get out of here. And sometimes, honestly, I don't even want to get out of here. I'm just going to be doing a strip. So we're just going to use this alcohol cap. Any kind of thing you use, doesn't matter. So here we go. In with the color. Woo, swirly, twirly it all the way around. Get a bowl, plastic bowl, anything but metal. Drop it in there. Toners are typically done with tin volume. It deposits color. So it's not going to change my roots. It is only depositing that tonality, which is violet. Anything beyond 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, whatever, double 40, they got all these crazy stuff, making chemicals and stuff. Well, I don't know about it. We'll lift the hair. Today, we are depositing, slapping it on. Shake this. This is a one, I'm all the way back here. This is a one, woo, getting silly on me, to one and a half ratio. Mix this together, slappy tappy it around. You do not want any chunks in this. Take your time, use a kitchen whisk if you have one, or if you have a brush, kind of like beat it a little bit. You know the drill, ladies. All right, so it's wet, but not soaking wet, it's towel dry. There's not really a method to the madness. Now, if you're in a salon, you do, you, you do wanna be neat with your method, so it looks aesthetically pleasing to everyone, but if you're at the shampoo bowl and they can't see, slap that on, because the quicker you can get it on, the quicker you can get them out of your chair and the more money you can make because you can turn and burn them. Get someone else in your chair, do two at once. Hell, do three. Some people, I've seen people do four. I can't do that, y'all. My brain won't let me, but I wish I could. Slap this on. In a perfect world, I'm wearing gloves. It's not going to stain your hands, but if you have any cuts, it will hurt. Making sure it is on there. Even, rubbing it through. Take a wide tooth comb. Not this one, a bigger one. Brush it through when you're done. I would put this in a plastic cap if you have one. If you don't, a Kroger bag, grocery bag works great. We're just gonna leave it out. Toners typically process for 15 minutes. I just picked this up at Kroger. This is magic root cover up for medium blonde hair, your dark roots back to blonde. So this may be helpful if you're also hair resetting with me and you just like can't stand the roots. I actually don't mind it. I remember this look kind of being popular when I was a lot younger, how you would have the bleached hair and then grown out. I know it's kind of like a pre-recession look. I'll link this below if anybody finds this interesting, but this is by L'Oreal Perry. I believe it was about $11. It's got that little trigger thing. Oh, really? Are they serious? <laughs> Are they serious with this product? They cannot be serious. Look at this, y'all. Look at that. <laughs> that does not look like the picture. Okay, don't buy this. This is zero out of 10. That, that is yellow. That is a primary. We know this. Now, to give credit where it's due, it does cover up the brown, but if I had to pick between having brown roots or yellow roots, I mean, call me crazy, but I think I'm gonna stick with the brown ones. <laughs> they do have it in darker colors though, if you have dark hair. I feel like this would work for that. But um, yeah, this is a no for me. I think it's time, yeah, it's time. Okay, now I'll be right back. We gotta shampoo this thing. It's still a little damp, and it's actually gonna be kinda hard to see because it wasn't really that yellow to begin with. This right here has a nice silverish violet tone. No yellow, but very bright blonde versus this part has more of the yellow tone. So if I were to put it on the rest of this hair, it would all look like this, just a very platinum blonde. And I forgot to mention, but when you shampoo, condition the toners out, you just use whatever. Honestly, right now, I'm not really shampooing my hair very much, but I am gonna take you through, cause like one person asked and one is good enough for me on how to do this braid. This is a cornrow, just one big cornrow. I'm not really good at braiding, but I'll do my best to show you. I am actually using product for this. Olaplex number nine. This is the newer one. And oh, they're coming out with the Olaplex. Ooh, she told me, I don't know, but it's a clarifying shampoo. I'll let y'all know how that is. Um, this is a serum. Oh, the number six, which is a smoother. Seven, which is the bonding oil, like four drops of that. Mix it together and I put it all over this stuff. Kind of helps rebuild, protect the hair, but also helps me be able to hold it in a braid. Take your free combs. Diagonal, three strands, one, two, three. Just like you would do a regular braid, overhand braid, like you're braiding your Barbie's hair or whatever, just the three strand braid. Instead of doing it over, you're reversing it under. 
that one goes under that one and you're pulling it so you're kind of on top of it close to the scalp then the one closest to your eyeballs you're gonna grab some hair from the bottom go under now the one in the back grab a little sliver of hair take it under and pull closest to the eyeballs taking some more hair under one towards the back some hair under so you're constantly adding hair to this that's how it's sticking on the scalp and remember you're on top because if you direct this kind of back it's going to look more like a french braid i want this to be an obvious like bubble corn 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 row corn row yeehaw and you just repeat this process we'll take that big chunk obviously the more hair you grab the bigger the braid's gonna be and honestly like braiding is not i'm really bad at braiding but i'm getting better now that i've been doing this to my hair but it just took a lot of practice like now it's it's not great but it is a lot better than it used to be but this is my signature hairstyle right now on these hair resets because it's just kind of well it's easy and it doesn't look bad when it's dirty because i'm not washing shampooing my hair a lot and then you just three strand braid it till you get to the end okay i hope that made sense for the one person that asked <laughs> I hope that made sense. Then you can like kind of pull out the little side, whatever you want to do. You pull these out if you want it to look bigger. I just kind of leave it alone. All right, there we have it. Like three different topics rolled into one. This was an ADHD episode today, episode three. I like it. Um, let me know if you have any questions, comments, leave them below. Also, if you're doing the hair reset with me, the 30 day hair reset, let me know. And if you're gonna join me for 30 more days to roll it into 60, let me know. We can be boring together. I can't wait to see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe, like, so you can get notifications if you click the bell if you're interested. I will see you next time for something cool. Something cool.